Africa is something that gets in your blood. And I, you either love it or it's an experience you take once and then you never return. And for those of us that have fallen in love, you walk off the airplane, the humidity comes, the smells come, there is this hint of burning something in the air, and then everything is so much sharper, it's brighter, and a load has been lifted whenever I go to Kenya. The smiles there are beyond anything you can ever imagine. As a culture, they are so kind and generous and happy and grateful. And coming from the United States where we have everything we need, we trust the lights will turn on in the morning and that our alarm and our cell phone's gonna wake us up. There we rely on the insects of the morning, the roosters crowing, and it's just a life of gratefulness when you go. My name is Dr. Julie Kelly. I'm a, a veterinarian here in Denver, Colorado. And many years ago, I'd had the opportunity to travel to Kenya and Tanzania and was able to climb Kilimanjaro. My, my trip was just incredible for the countryside, but the biggest missing factor was I saw no animals. Um, for a multiple week trip, I saw not one elephant. And that was really sad for me. And I knew when I would go back, I was interested in helping with the problem with poaching. I had the opportunity, and several veterinarians in the community had told me about an organization that they were going to be traveling with to Africa called the African Network for Animal Welfare. And part of what their mission was, was to vaccinate for rabies, but also work on the human-animal bond. Dr. Julie is amazing. Uh, Dr. Julie Kelly is the person who introduced me to ANA, the African Network for Animal Welfare. Their um, biggest office is based in Kenya, in Africa, and we have an office here in Denver, um, which we're working really hard to get people to know more about what we do. Um, ANA is incredible. They work in Kenya through many different facets. Aside from helping with animal health, they also help with conservation, they have a lot of anti-poaching uh, measures with um, a very dedicated group of individuals that they call the guardians that help make sure that poaching stops. Um, that's a very big part and a very big project of ANA in Kenya at this point. Uh, one of the biggest projects that they do um, with veterinarians here from the United States is traveling abroad and offering um, a rabies clinic and also a spay and neuter clinic. As I learned more about the organization, the parts that I uh, really fascinated me the most was that it included all species. It wasn't just the elephant, the giraffe, the rhino, but it included dogs and cats and how they fit into the community and how those animals could enhance the life of the people of the communities that they lived in. I flew here from Denver to Kenya and participated in a three-week rabies vaccination clinic. Um, there are thousands of cases of human rabies in Kenya every year. Um, it's 99% fatal, at the same time 100% preventable. A leash and a collar is just not something that is available to, to most people. And when they are used, they are, they are made out of what's available in the communities. And most of that, unfortunately, is trash and, or braided plants, uh, chains. And animals are not chained, they're not leashed, they're not used to collars, and so their animals roam freely. This is what makes them high risk for rabies. Uh, dogs interact with the wildlife. Uh, they, they can have fights with the wildlife where they're bitten, and then they come back into the communities, and this is how they spread rabies. So if we are able to get out into the community and vaccinate these dogs and cats and donkeys against rabies, chances are that if they bite a child or bite an adult, that that rabies will not get transmitted because they will be protected from it. 
our goal is to take human rabies in Kenya down to zero. I was fortunate enough to be able to take a camera and to take a GoPro and really document what it was like day in and day out to be a part of these clinics. This is us, <laughs> pre-clinic, trying to figure out how to say certain things. We know things like, Kichwa Magu, which what we're trying to say is, take your dog's head and put it between your legs. Yeah, just gear, it's not, it's not sexy packing, but uh, it is packing. <laughs> Here's all the gear. All the gear. Um, our days start very early. They start around five or six in the morning. And we jump in the Anna Land Cruiser and we are off to the veterinary building where we meet with the government vets in Kenya. Um, by nine o'clock, usually we're, we're rolling out to our different stations. Um, I think people here in the United States, um, Americans are really used to taking their animals to a veterinary clinic that has electricity and running water and you know the staff is in scrubs. Um, our clinics in Kenya are vastly different. So the clinics are, they are so varied from where we pull over on the side of the road, you'll see an animal and a, and a person walking down the side of the road to we meet under the acacia tree by the second hut on the left. Uh, the clinics consist really of our, we bring out our coolers and our drugs and our vaccines and we drive around in a large van with, we have a, an announcer and a, a large speaker on the top. <laughs> And they are saying Tangazo, Tangazo, announcement, announcement. And they are rolling through town telling everybody that Anna is here. We have rabies vaccinations. They are free. And bring all of your animals down and let us vaccinate them. This is Dr. Dennis. This is Dr. Casey. Are you guys ready today? What kind of animals are we? do you think we're going to see? Bunda. Bunda. Lots of donkeys. Lots of donkeys. We're hoping to get a lot of cats and dogs. I think there's a dog right there, right behind you. Here today. This is what it looks like. Right, right here. here. We are doing it right here today. That's today, right. Today, today, today. The vaccine clinics usually start out slow in the morning, but as the days go on, you'll just start seeing person after person walking in between the trees, coming in with their dogs and many walk miles to bring their animals. Others strap them with bungee cords to the back of a motorcycle. Um, we had multiple that came in on the back um, driven by donkeys and carts. So a lot of times people have puppies and kittens that they can't just bring in their arms. And so it's actually not uncommon for someone to come to you with a bag and it's a bag of kittens or it's a bag of puppies. And in this particular case, it was a bag of kittens. Get them water. Yeah. Do you guys want to wave hi? Yeah. Can you say hi? Say hi to the camera. Say hello. Say jumbo. So in our last mission for vaccine clinics, all of the funds that we raised, 100% of those funds went to buying vaccines, medications, and support of the guardians. We raised about $10,000 on our last trip, and we bought over 6,000 vaccines. One dog can bite many, and for 60 cents, we can save multiple lives. We are self-funded in that all of us that go and contribute our time and our expertise pay for our own way. So any money that is donated towards ANAL, 100% of that goes towards medications, buying boots, buying uniforms, giving education to the guardians. We need several different things. Because Anna works on several different arms in terms of the animal health clinics and the uh, conservation and guardianship part and also the anti-poaching, um, the best thing right now is actually money. Um, we have the vaccine, we have a lot of the medicine. Um, we need the money to purchase it. We also need the money to fund different projects. We have a beautiful guardianship project right now where we have a group of gentlemen and they're called the Guardians. They're down in Voy, um, which is south of Nairobi, 
where um, Savo National Park is located. And their job is to make sure that there's no poaching as the animals cross in between Savo East and Savo West. But they need things to be able to fight the poachers. And those are things that, of course, we can find in Kenya. The problem is, is that we need the funding for it. The human-animal bond is what I do. As a veterinarian, I've, I've worked my whole school career towards medicine on how can we save every animal. And what is so wonderful about this organization is not only do I get to work at saving the animals, but I get to save and help with the people. And this is the, the one organization where everything comes full circle. We, we teach, we give, um, we help, and at the same time, it, it changes us. We, I come back fulfilled and I come back excited about my career and I can't wait to go back. This one little rabies vaccine for 60 cents means so much to these communities. Um, when you live in fear of, of dying from a disease, that 60 cents is all it takes to, to save your life. It just seems like so little. How do you feel after today? I feel great. How did it go? It was a good day. How do you feel? Good? That was an incredible day. What do you think? I thought it was great. So good good day, great day, all in all. We're rolling out. <laughs> great day, all in all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.